Hello everyone, today we'll explain Upper Moon Demon 6 Daki's backstory, about her previous life as a human, and about her role as the Upper Demon Moon 6. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video so we can make more videos about this in the future. Now without any more delays, let's start the video. Daki is a vain, cruel, hateful, and arrogant individual who takes enjoyment toying with her victims. And she seems to be very insufferable to failure, just like her master, Muzan Kibutsuji, as she even quarreled to her brother in their final moments after being slain, shouting that someone so hideous does not deserve to be her brother. She also possesses a childish streak, due to being transformed when she was only 13 years old, tending to throw tantrums towards anything that doesn't go her way. Deep down, however, Daki deeply cares about her brother, and is grateful for his protection attitude even after their tragedy and subsequent transformation. After her death, Daki reconciled with Kyotaro in the afterlife, likely a result of being inspired by Tanjiro's exhortation and remembering her past experience. As a human, Daki was originally a kind and honest girl, but could get convinced very easily. Her brother's experience, as well as his cynical view of the world, became a vital point of influence to shape her personality. Their personalities and lives mirror those and contrast those between Tanjiro and Nezuko. Daki was born many years ago with the birth name of Ume in the entertainment district's Rashomangasi, lowest caste area, where only sick prostitutes, geishas, and oirons who could no longer work in the brothels were sent and left to die. Her birth mother was a prostitute there, having given birth to her elder brother a few years before. Her biological father is never mentioned, but was likely one of her mother's customers. Her brother noted their mother to be severely mentally unstable, most likely due to the district's extremely harsh and poor living conditions, having attempted to kill herself and her son numerous times as well. She also physically abused him due to not having the finances to keep him fed, forcing him to fend for himself. When Ume was born, their mother hated her due to her hair color and eyes and would try to kill her. One day, their mother tried to cut Ume's hair off with a razor, but Giyutaro became enraged and went on a rampage. This led to their mother distancing herself from them. Ume was primarily raised by her elder brother until her early teen years, when her mother passed away from the disease Ume, the same sickness she was then named after. Giyutaro noted that, even as a young child, Ume had an incredibly beautiful face that even grown men and women would falter from looking at. She was so beautiful that if she smiled, she would be given things, leading to the nickname Shira Ume. This gave him hope that the both of them could rise from poverty and be able to live a better life by being scouted and eventually recruited to work in one of the most prestigious brothels of the district. And just as he hoped, Ume, in her early teen years, was finally chosen to work in one of the entertainment district's high-class brothels. She began receiving proper education, taught the proper skills, and fed the finest foods in her training to become an oiran. And even before her training was completed, Ume had already begun making a fortune by attracting many suitors and customers to the brothel due to her beauty. At the same time, her elder brother began working as her collector and would collect money and debts owed to the brothel. However, this all came to an end when Ume poked out the eye of a samurai, a customer of hers, when he insulted her brother while he was away collecting debts. In retaliation to this, she was tied, bound, burned alive, and left to die in a ditch. She was then discovered by her brother, who began to hysterically panic upon seeing her near-death state. They were then discovered by the same samurai she blinded, accompanied by the manager of the house she worked in. The pair attempted to kill both Ume and Giyotaro, only to be killed by Giyotaro instead, who then picked up his sister's charred body and carried her around town in search of help. His struggle turned out to be in vain, as he came to the realization that no one would help them. As Gyutaru collapsed from exhaustion and fatigue from his severe wounds, Doma, who was upper rank 6 at the time, happened upon the siblings while wandering the district in search of beautiful geishas to devour. Taking pity on them, he offered to help the pair by turning them into demons, claiming that it was because he was a nice guy. He then challenged them to become strong enough to be chosen by Muzan Kibutsuji and join the 12 Kizuki alongside himself. Demon Life Many years after becoming a demon, Daki had already gained a reputation for her cruelty, such that senile elders remembered her ill temper and demanded for Hime, meaning princess, to be added to her name. 
The activities of both her and her brother eventually caught the attention of Muzan Kibutsuji, who acknowledged their strength and power and officially allowed them to join the 12 Kizuki, both were given the rank of upper rank 6. At some point, Daki fought, killed, and ate 7 Hashira. Two days before Tanjiro, Kamado, and company infiltrated the entertainment district, Daki was confronted by Omitsu, the manager of the Kyogoku house, over the mistreatment of the staff. When the hostess revealed her knowledge of Daki's past and extended lifespan, the upper rank seized her. Carrying her far above the district, Daki mocked Omitsu for her stupidity, labeling her as inedible, and dropped her to her death. Returning to her room, Daki was surprised to see Muzan Kibutsuji. Bowing to her master, she listened as he praised her for her newfound strength, cautioned her against getting careless, and stated his high hopes for her as a special demon. Entertainment District Arc Walking with several assistants, Daki passed under Tengen Uzui's watchful gaze undetected in her Oiran disguise. Later, using her demonic sash, she questioned Makio about the letters she'd been sending. Sensing Inosuke Hashibira's presence, Daki's sash fled. Daki appeared behind Zenitsu Agatsuma as Warabihime, demanding to know what he was doing in someone else's room, and quickly grew irritated at his lack of a response. She extended this irritation to two girls who tried to defend Zenitsu, insulting the young demon slayer before viciously abusing a crying girl for not cleaning a room fast enough. Her anger grew as Zenitsu grabbed her wrist to stop her cruelty. Daki hit the youth through several walls, threatening him with further discipline, but stopped when the master of the brothel begged her not to. Apologizing to him, she ordered Zenitsu's wounds be treated and the mess from her fit of anger cleaned up. The upper rank then pondered over Zenitsu's identity, noting he might be a demon slayer. Later, in her room, she gloated over the success of her plan, promising to kill and eat all of her enemies. Daki then appeared behind Koinatsu, seeking to eat her before she left to be married. She was then confronted by Tanjiro Kamado while restraining her fellow Oiran and questioned him about the amount of backup he had, including when the Hashira would arrive. Dismissing the youth for his weakness, Daki soon grew enraged when he demanded she release Koinatsu and attacked the Demon Slayer with her sashes. Noting that he had survived, she complimented Tanjiro's eyes, wishing to eat them. She briefly clashed with the young Demon Slayer again, noting his skill in only severing the section of the sash containing Koinatsu, but confidently proclaimed his doom regardless. She then expressed irritation at her foe's interfering actions, asking Tanjiro about his backup again. Despite his refusal, she offered to let him live if he told her, noting that in their brief clash, his sword had been chipped. She also stated that whoever had forged the blade was a terrible blacksmith, and quickly grew irritated once more when her opponents denied this, promising to kill him with her next attack. Launching said attack, Daki was shocked when Tanjiro cut through her sashes with a Hinokami Kagura technique. Noting a change in his sword style, she dodged his next attack, countering with an attack of her own. Missing due to another Hinokage Kagura technique, the upper rank turned to face her opponent just as his blade struck her neck. Her decapitated head then fell to the ground, facing the head of Gyotaru. As their heads began to disintegrate, Daki screamed at her brother, blaming him for their defeat and claiming that an unsightly thing like him could never be her sibling, while Gyotaru retaliated that Daki was weak and did nothing to help. Saddened by the siblings bickering, Tanjiro then stepped in, covering Gyotaru's mouth to stop him from screaming abuse at his sister and pleading with them to try and get along, as they only had each other left in the world. Daki began to cry, wailing that she didn't want to die. However, her head finally disintegrated, leaving Gyotaro alone. As Gyotaro began to remember their life before becoming demons, Daki appeared to him in her original form as Ume, asking him where they were going and to take her along with him. He initially rejected her, sharply telling her not to follow him. However, Ume suddenly embraced him tightly, apologizing for her past words and crying out that they were siblings and she would never let him go. The pair then departed to the afterlife, with Gyutaro carrying Daki on his back as he had always done before.